That's the gospel in a nutshell. That's the gospel in a nutshell. I was good. Like, I really don't need to add much more. But I am going to add this in there. And this will probably be our final scripture. Sprinkle it on. So yes, God loved us so, so much. So much. That he literally seated in heaven with all every first of all he could have everything and anything in the world but he looked at us he's like i love these broken people mm. i want them to spend eternity with me because i love them so much come on so he came bit. down he stooped so low into our sinful world where we knew god by the way we always knew of god especially when we go back to the old testament with the israelites and we pray for the Israelites that the yeah, fullness of the Gentiles come and Israel, all, all of Israel will be saved. Hallelujah. We are thankful that you grafted us in and that you adopted us. Let's not get it twisted, Gentiles. It's because that we got grafted in, because the Israelites had hardened hearts against God, that we even had a chance for salvation. So yes. hallelujah for that. We're dogs with thick at the scraps. Yes. And that's fine We're by thankful. Me. We're thankful, Lord. Yes, Lord. Provoke that jealousy, Lord God, because everything you're doing for the Gentiles is going to provoke the jealousy of the Israelites, and we're mm -hmm. all going to be saved. Every tribe, tongue, and nation. Every Just think about that picture. One. Destroy racism in the name of Jesus. None of it matters, the color of your skin, your background, your denomination. We are all children of God. Yes, Lord. And we will all be at the throne, worshiping him, praising him. Every tribe, tongue, and nation. Multitudes. Don't even make me start diving into Revelation. Literally multitudes of every tribe, tongue, and nation will be before the throne just worshiping the God that created the heavens and the earth and he had the grace and the mercy to let us be a part of it. Hallelujah. So yes, God stoops down. He robes himself in flesh because there's so much sin. The only way that he could take away the sins of the world was to take on that flesh and literally die as someone who never sinned. Like the Old Testament, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but what he required... Of the people that made sacrifices and offerings that the lamb would be spotless mm. and what jesus is the lamb of god he was the spotless lamb who never sinned who literally died who was persecuted who was rejected by his own people that he loved so much but that was the only way that we could have eternal life is because he shed his blood for us wow. by the power wow, of the wow, blood wow. you know and we he just wants us to have faith in him you know trust in him give our give our lives to him get dunked in the water get baptized oh. Okay, so this will be the final scripture. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, maybe I just felt this conviction too. Like, maybe we literally got to break it down a little far farther. Because guess what? After he died, he didn't just die, people. Jesus is living right now. He rose three days later. They buried him. And imagine this. Imagine this. Because we get to see it now 2,000 years later. We know the story. Imagine John and Peter and these guys are like, the Messiah is dead? Even Mother Mary. Oh, she was weeping at the cross. So it's like, they literally thought it was over. Like, did we just devote our life? Because people gave up their entire lives to follow this man. Literally, in an instant. Want to come follow me? And just from his presence, they're like, I'll give it all up for you. You are the Messiah. So imagine seeing that guy die after three and a half years. You gave everything to follow him. So what happened is, they end up burying him. And when they went to the grave, it was two women. I think it was Mary and... I don't know who the other one was. I think it was both Marys. Marys. Yeah, I think it was both Marys. It was just significant. I'll add this for a context yeah. point. Um, back in that day, I, I think the reason that God chose two women to go spread the word that Jesus has written, risen, the first two people to find that out, is because yeah. back then women, like, I'm not saying, like, this isn't mean, women really had no, like, say. Yeah. Like, their word wasn't trusted. They had to submit to their husband. And, like, if a woman said that, they... Uh, they didn't really have value to, and, in the eyes of people. And I mean, all yeah. of a sudden, they go up to the apostles and say, you can take it over. Yeah. Wow, that's really good. Well, no, no, take it, like, to continue the rest of the story. Because yeah. they, they find, they, they go to the tomb, and yeah. all of a sudden, so the angel, an angel appears there. to them. And they're like, why, he basically is like, why are you weeping, you know? Like, hmm. the, st the stone was rolled, and they didn't see Jesus. They figured someone basically took his body. Mm -hmm. And then... Long story short, Jesus ends up meeting people on this road of Emmaus, I think it was. or Some, some road, these two, two people are walking, and Jesus just appears. But they don't even know that it's Jesus, because they're walking this seven-mile journey, thinking that their Messiah was dead. They couldn't believe it. Once again, just they were just destroyed. They're like, I can't believe he's dead. This was our Messiah, you know. It's all over now. But he appears to them of the breaking of the bread, mm. which I know that a lot of people know the significance of the bread is the body of Christ once he broke his body and spilled his blood which is the mm. wine so when he literally they sat at the table with Jesus imagine this you're walking with Jesus in his resurrected resurrected body but you don't even realize him because you think he's gone but now you're sitting at the table with Jesus 
and you still don't recognize them until Jesus breaks the bread. And then once they, this is where it gets so crazy. Once he broke the bread, they got the revelation of who it was and he vanished from their eyes, but they knew that Jesus was alive. Now words are spreading, words spreading. So Jesus stayed on the earth and revealed himself to his disciples and like five other, 500 other people, Paul says. So not, it didn't end on the cross. He resurrected, he went to heaven. He's alive. He's with us. He sent his Holy Spirit. He's here with us on the earth right now. So I just wanted to break that down to kind of a simple gospel. I probably could explain it a little bit better, but we just want to give you some context. So like I said, I'm still new. I'm just trying to break it down to what I know, that he died for us, but it wasn't done there. He rose again. Then he went up to heaven and sent his Holy Spirit so he could dwell within us. Right. He's literally in us. The same power that rose him from the dead is in us. Come on. We have power and authority in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's amazing. So the last one, I think it's just a good scripture because this is from Mark 10, 45. So the Israelites from the Old Testament always thought Jesus was going to come down. The Messiah was going to come down to be this warrior that's riding in on the horse with his sword to come slay all their enemies, right? So Mark 10, 45 says, the son of man came not to be served, but to serve. Ooh. And to give his life as a ransom for men. Praise the Lord. So imagine this. The man with all the power in the world who could come down and have anything, do anything, be anything, decided that he was be going to become a servant mm -hmm. to sinners so that we could all reconcile back to Father God. Like, it's just so, it's such a beautiful thing. It's hard to wrap our heads around. He was a Jewish carpenter from yes. Nazareth. We follow a Jewish carpenter from Nazareth. And they say nothing good comes from Nazareth. And nothing good comes from Nazareth, they I said. Disagree. But they didn't realize. Yeah, we disagree with that. So he came to serve us. The one who literally could have just, once again, plopped on the throne. I am the king. I am the Messiah. Worship me. Serve me. Demanded that we do everything for him. Because he didn't need anything from us. <laughs> he, did, he didn't need a thing from us. But he decided to give everything that he had to us. Oh, that's good. Knowing that he was focused on eternity. And he saw that we'd be able to spend eternity with him for billions and billions and billions and billions of years. And one more billion after that. And one more billion after that. He decided to give his life as a ransom. As a ransom for many. He paid the price. He, he paid swiped the, price. The, the card in advance. He we are, prepaid for yeah. our sins, by the way. You know how you prepay for Call of Duty and you, <laughs> and you order yeah. it two months in advance and they take the money yeah. before? He did that before you were even born. He yeah. paid for your sins before you were even born. He put it on the tab, signed Hallelujah. the bill, and said, peace be with you and do it in my name. Yes. That's all he wants. That's do it so for good. the glory of the kingdom in Jesus' yes. name kingdom purposes that's just like the longer you grow on your walk you just realize literally even the little things that you do i love this such a simple scripture seek first the kingdom and all will be added i don't care if you're driving to do something like very minuscule in your heart you're like you just feel like i should ask the lord if this is the right thing should i even go to this job interview mm. ask the holy spirit literally for I, I know it sounds crazy but like little decisions in life it does not hurt. Anytime that you're praying, anytime you're engaging with God is not a bad thing. No. He just wants to be in your presence and he wants to engage with you and connect with you and to go deeper with you I and to that. be intimate. That's what he really wants us to be, an intimate relationship. You know, He literally has the abundance of the riches of his glory, our, our inheritance, by the way. We have access to it. We have access to literally the heavenly places. So if the more deeper that we dive into our relationship with God, the more he's going to show us how we steward with what he's already shown us and our gratitude and our thankfulness for everything he's done for us. And, oh, the zoning that we started, I just felt the here is holy. I'm just gonna, before we go, I just, I really just feel like led on this. We need to stop, especially just as the body, focusing on the future. Because guess what? The future is in God's hands. Mm. And if you're rooted in the word, you know that he's already got your future taken care of. But how do you make sure that your future is taken care of? But knowing God's already got taken care of, we focus on today. Yes. If each you focus minute. on each and every opportunity of the day, what can I do today to get better so when I get there, I'll be ready for the promises God has Ooh. on my life? If I focus each and every day, grow and progress and trust in the process, it's a process. Yes. We can't just be like, okay, God, I know that you got all this for me in the future, but you're, you're being complacent, you're being lazy, you're being comfortable, you're being convenient. Ooh. Cuffed. You're cuffed to these things that are literally don't love you back. Once again, shout out Mike Todd. We're not going to act like we took credit for that. No. But it's so good. 
You're cuffed and you're loving things that don't love you back. You're going back to things that are just making you comfortable. And he, what he said was, be comfortable being, get un, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Because mm -hmm. that's when you can grow in Christ. Like, for me, I'm working on that boldness. The Lord's really been talking to me, even at my work. I work at Aldi. He's like, start praying for people. Mm -hmm. Just start Good. praying for people. And by the grace of God, he encouraged me to do that today. And I believe someone got healed. I really, truly do with all my heart. Praise the Lord. So, just being able to get uncomfortable. Yes, hallelujah. Glory to God. If you're just going to be in your comfort zone for all your life, you're not going to grow. You're not going to progress. You're not going to walk in the promises. And you're not going to walk in your purpose. And you're not going to walk in your calling by just staying cuffed to convenience and comfort. It's just it's just not going to happen. God just is displeased with lazy. You know, it's Proverbs. He don't like lazy. No. At all. He wants you moving. He wants you to take risks. I think I've said it in a previous episode. Don't play it safe. Take the leap of faith. I will mm. continue to preach that. I'll continue to teach that. Because by faith, that's when God actually activates his power. When you go and do something that you're like, God, maybe you could do this. Like, I believe that you can. But the only way you're going to find out is actually by stepping out and activating the faith. And that's when you see the power of God. That's when you see the glory of God in action. And was it, was it Todd that did the scripture about the two? Uh, I forgot who it was. It was... They were about to battle the Israel. Uh, the Israelites were going to battle against the Philistines, and the I, forget, I can't remember who it was. They went over the the, the fence. It was really two against like six thousand people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't think of his name right now, but you'll have to look it up. I don't. I can't think of it. It was literally two Israelites against a whole entire army of Philist uh, Philistines. They had their chariots and everything. But he looked at his armor bearer. He's like, they had one weapon against their whole army. Two men against the whole army. He looked at him. He's like, I just believe God, if we go over there, he's going to deliver us from this from this battle and we're going to be victorious. Praise that faith. That's what incre increased my faith, God, because that's just absolutely nuts. So what happens? They're like, life or death, we're going to put our faith in God. Mm -hmm. We believe that he can do this. But it was a maybe faith step. But that's when they saw the power of God. This whole army ended up killing each other like... It was just so nuts. You'll have to read into it. I can't remember the guy's name right now. But it's the armor bearer story. And it's absolutely enough nuts to see how you can activate faith. And how God's power will shine through that faith that you have. It will reward your faith every single time. Action plus obedience yeah. equals faith. Love, faith, and obedience. Those are three simple steps to being more intimate with God. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so we just... We just wanted to bring you kind of the simple gospel. I know we got a little more deeper than expected, but once again, uh, we just follow the Holy Spirit. And uh, we thank you guys for taking the time, and we just pray the Lord blesses you. And Heavenly Father, mm. once again, we just thank you for your word yes, and for your Holy Spirit. And we just pray that you send your Holy Spirit to convict people by the power of your word. And we just pray that this word lands on good soil. I just pray that you open up ears, you open up hearts. And you help people to walk on that path of righteousness and holiness by the power of your Holy Spirit and by engaging with the word. And I just pray an increase in intercession over everyone under the sound of my voice mm -hmm. that people would start praying to you more, even if it's that first prayer that they've ever said, just five seconds. Father God, I don't even know what my life means. Just bring it to him and he will give you clarity. He'll give you vision. He will help you on this road. That's what he's going to do. Whatever path you're walking on right now, just seek him and he will lead you to his promises. And he's going to prosper you. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We appreciate your time. Yes. Um, this has been another great episode from Rap Church Ministries. We thank you for the viewer. We thank the Lord for yeah. the viewer. Thank Again, we are time. nothing without. We're just speaking the words of God. Yeah. We're just, God is speaking through us. We're, yeah. the, our, we're not saying anything. Yeah, we just so, open up our mouths yeah, and correct. just let him flow through us. And if you guys got any questions, DM us. We've been getting yeah. a few DMs. Um, but if you guys got any questions, we're actually going to open that up on the show like, if you want to ask us questions, we can go more in depth about whatever you guys are wondering. So yeah. don't be afraid to DM us. What does this mean? I have a question about this. If you want to be um, just in contact with the show, let us know. Like we would love to get other voices, other people just involved. That's the whole yeah. thing. We're trying to foster a community of believers in Christ. That's that simple. Um, but yeah, I just thank you guys for tuning in. Yeah. And just anyone that wants to share a testimony of the faithfulness and the goodness of God, we always want to hear that. Yes. And I'm going to be bold. Yes. You can follow us on whatever Facebook and Instagram. And I'm literally just going to say my number. You can text me anything. I'm literally here for you, brothers and sisters. 
because God loves you so much and we just want to do our part. Mm -hmm. We just want to impact communities. We want to bring people together and we want to unify the body of Christ. So when Jesus comes back, he's coming back for the spotless bride. So any questions, any concerns, we would love to hear stories of what, how God's transformed your life. So my number personally is 913-283-0069. 913-283-0069. Feel free to contact us with any questions, anything that we can prayer help requests. with. Prayer requests. We will pray down the house in the name of Jesus, knowing that he can deliver. We serve a yes. God that is a healer, a deliverer, and he, a God of peace, the Prince of Peace. And we believe everything the word says. And he is a God that doesn't change. And he changed. And he said that greater works than even his, when Jesus was on the, work, on the world, was going to take place in this new covenant. So we are believing that there will be greater glory in this new covenant than in the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. Think about that. Moses saw God face to face. He had a cloud following him around. The word of God says that there'd be greater glory than even that in the New Testament. And that's what we're living in. So anything that you need prayer for, any healings, anything like that, we will be glad to pray for you. Just shoot your name, shoot your, um, whatever, your concern, your testimony, your prayer request. Um, we would be glad to connect with you in any way. Um, anytime we, we want to engage with the community too. Yeah, that's right. um, Bible studies, we're going to start trying to get a weekly one of those in. Um, people are welcome. We just want to unify, unify the body, yes. edify one another, build each other up to live righteous and holy in the eyes of the Lord. Um, so once again, just feel free to contact either of us. Uh, we just pray that the Lord peace is with you. An abundance of blessings and favor on your lives and for your children and for mm. your children and for your children's Children. children. In Jesus' name, Amen. hallelujah. And just remember, we love you because yes, he love loved you. us first. Yes. First, that's that's bottom line. We love you because God loves you, because God loves us, because yes. you love God, because we love God, because we love Jesus, because Jesus is in God, because God is in Jesus. And if you followed that, then you might have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Take care.